All right, what's up guys? You know, I'm gonna take a break from the this series, the uh, Security Plus series to talk about SMB Loris. So SMB Loris is a take on slow Loris. And if you Google it, you'll see that a slow Loris is actually a primate. Yeah, we're talking about mammals, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the vulnerability, the denial of service vulnerability specifically, that was discovered and then later exposed this past Saturday at DEF CON 25. And it's really elegant. So Slow Loris was created by Robert Hansen. And the reason it's so elegant is because you are able to effectively deny service to a server with minimal bandwidth. So it's kind of like a send flood attack where you open up a send connection. In other words, you send that, you send that send packet and the server is awaiting for the SYNAC, but you never give it that SYNAC. So it just holds up the resources and then the box um, dies. SMB Loris is worse because the box doesn't blue screen. See, if it blue screened, that would be okay. Well, it wouldn't be okay, but it would be better than what happens in this attack. In a blue screen, at least the machine will force a memory dump, a crash dump, and then it will automatically reboot. With SMB Loris, the box crashes hard. It does not automatically reboot, which means that you have to physically power cycle the device to get it back up and work, working. Now, the worst thing about this is Microsoft is not going to patch it. They're saying if you have um, if you have public servers, in other words, servers that have port 443 or 139 exposed to the internet, that's on you. You guys should be fire, firewalling that off. And you, they have some merit to that, but that doesn't absolve them from patching the vulnerability. It's clearly a flaw in SMB implementation. It should be blocked. And the best, 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 best part is that it doesn't matter if you have SMB version 1, 2, or 3 disabled, you're still vulnerable. And... It affects everything from Windows 10 all the way up or all the way back to Windows 2000. So it doesn't matter if you're running Windows 8.1, Windows 10, Windows Server 2016. Actually, that's what we're going to do in this demonstration. I'm going to show you this attack from my Kali Linux box against my Windows Server um, 2016 machine. Now, before we get into this, I just have to be really clear. If you do not have explicit written permission from someone with the authority to grant that permission in the target organization, you're not running this attack. It's as simple as that. You need a permission memo from not only the janitor, not from the janitor, but from someone that has the authority to grant you permission to pen test the uh, server for this, this flaw. If you just fire up this attack in your organization and then you try to blame me, don't, don't blame me. Okay, that's, your, that's on you if you want to do something stupid like that. Okay, so always make sure you have written permission from someone who's authorized to do so before you do any kind of pen testing exercise. It'll save you a lot of headache a lot of fines, and it'll keep you out of jail. I'm serious about that. All right, so um, let me show you how this works. Uh, let, let me just jump right into it. So let's go ahead and look at my uh, Windows Server 2016. Let's go ahead and verify the version of Windows. So we can use git wmi object, and we'll use the class parameter to git operating, operating system. So you can see here, I'm using Windows Server 2016. Just wanted to give you the proof here. Okay, it doesn't matter uh, what version I'm using. The only thing that matters is that you have port 445 exposed. Okay, it doesn't matter if SMB is disabled. If port 445 is exposed on the, to the internet or to the attacker, you're screwed, basically, for lack of a better word. Okay, so if I do netstat anod find string, I'm gonna look for 445, you can see I am in fact listening. This means all interfaces, the zeros mean that I'm listening on this port, okay? So now let's open up the task manager. Let's go to the performance tab, and we're gonna look at the memory. So you can see right here, I've got, uh, I've got two gigs of memory. Now, the reason why this works, it's, it's, all, it's all based on a bug in the length parameter. So the NBSS, let me break this down. So the first packet that goes to this machine is going to be what's known as an MBSS frame. The first four bytes indicate that an SMB session would like to be initiated by a client. Now, the reason why it applies to all versions, this vulnerability applies to all versions, is because the SMB version information isn't included in that packet. This, this is actually before the version information is exchanged. So it's very early on in the negotiation process. And what happens is that the, the server will allocate 128 kilobytes of non-volatile memory for each NBSS incoming packet it receives. And so if you're able to, to create a multi-threaded application, then you can, that, that creates these half open 
in SMB sessions, in other words, sessions that are just sending this MBSS packet to the victim and doesn't actually establish the SMB connection, you can effectively disable the server completely. You can completely knock it offline. All right, so now we've got the task manager open. Let's just go ahead and take a look at my SMB configuration. And you can see here that I've got SMB1 and 2 enabled. Remember I told you it doesn't matter if you have those enabled or not. So let's just go ahead and prove that by setting the SMB server configuration to, I'm just hitting tab by the way to get through this, uh, false. And then we're gonna say yes, and then we're gonna go up and we're gonna set the same thing to, to version two. And then we're gonna go up and we're gonna look at the SMB configuration. If we scroll up, you're gonna see now that it is disabled, right? So, so far so good. So we're disabled, but remember, we're still listening on port 445. Now let me make sure, let me get my IP address here. I'm at 10.0.0.11, so if I go to my Kali box, I should be able to ping. Great, I can't. So sudo if config eth0, let's set my IP to nine, and then I'll say net mask 255.255.0. Let's see if I can do it now. Awesome. Now I'm gonna open up Jedit, sudo Jedit. Ah. Let's go ahead and pop, open this up, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So first we're going to turn off IP tables. We're gonna flush on, we're, basically what we're doing is we're appending these, these values to the output IP table chain. And that's what A means, it means append. And we're basically saying TCP protocol, P is protocol, TCP, any flags that have the reset flag in it, coming from our machine, so going outbound, drop them. You need to do that. You need to block the reset packets, the reset frames that, that your, your machine, your attacking machine is gonna to send to the victim. Or if you don't do that, this attack is totally not gonna to work. So this is really critical. Then we have our SMB lower script. We're using Scapy, importing all the modules from Scapy. And then I am essentially creating a raw socket. I'm assigning the IP address to the I variable. I'm assigning the port to the T variable. Then I'm looping through ports from zero to 700. So 701 ports. I'm gonna establish here, that's gonna be my source port range. And after I establish this connection, the last frame I'm gonna send is an acknowledgement that includes this, these, uh, these, these are actually the, the packets, the four bytes that indicate that an SMB session is about to start. So I got this from the great work by Jenna Magius, who revealed this vulnerability at DEF CON 25 this past Saturday, which by the time you read this, it's probably gonna be a long time from now, but she went ahead and showed this, full disclosure. It's, the problem is that there's a 17-bit length here and these, uh, like I said, every incoming connection allocates 128 kilobytes, okay? So you need to make sure that that is inside of your packet. And then I'm just gonna send, I remember I stands for the IP. I'm gonna send the port. And then I'm gonna also send this MBSS frame right here, all right? And then finally, to speed this up, to make it run a lot faster, I create this run script, which basically creates 10 threads each with 700 ports that are being allocated a piece. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. We need to run the reset first. Awesome. Then we're going to run the script uh, just by typing run. If I go to the server, you should notice some interesting stuff here. Now look at this. You see the non-paged pool, right? You see that number is increasing? Right now it's at 96, that's 100 megabytes. That number is gonna keep increasing. It's just gonna keep, it's gonna keep skyrocketing until the box crashes. And like I said, it's not gonna be a pleasant crash. It's gonna completely exhaust all the memory. Remember, non-volatile memory is physical memory. We're talking about RAM. So it doesn't matter if your box has 128 gigabytes of RAM. It doesn't matter. Eventually, through this attack, the box will crash. And the best part of all, or the worst part, depending on if you're an attacker or a defender, it's that the attacker doesn't even need a beefy system. You can literally go to Micro Center right now, buy a Raspberry Pi, buy an SD card, install Kali Linux on that SD card, and then run its attack. It's, it's really as simple as that, and that's what makes it so dangerous. So my best advice if you wanna prevent this is to either block SMB at your firewall, your border routers, block SMB there, or you, wanna, you probably wanna do both of these. You wanna block SMB at your border routers, 
as well as making sure that you rate limit internal SMB traffic, right? Because you know, there's, there's really no legitimate reason why you should have a server, a public facing server in your DMZ that's listening on port 445. I mean, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So uh, I'm not saying you deserve it if this happens to you, but there's, there's, really, no, there's really no excuse for that, uh, to be honest with you, there's no excuse. All right, so there you have it. You know, this is a really big issue. Uh, hopefully you guys will take the advice in this, uh, in this quick demonstration to protect your servers. Block 445 at your border. Make sure you're rate limiting SMB inside your network. Again, my name is Vani Hudson. Make sure that you thumb this video up. Of course, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, still thumb it up. <laughs> and of course, click the subscribe button. Um, I'm actually, I actually have a bunch of videos right now on my channel that are related to cybersecurity and hacking. I'm going through a, a Security Plus training course, so you should also look at that. It's all on this channel, it's all free, but you gotta subscribe if you wanna get the updates. And leave a comment, because I jump in the comments and I respond. Thanks again for watching. I know this video was kinda long, but I appreciate you staying with me, all right? I'll see you later, bye.